Um, I am recording the meeting as, as always. Uh, these meetings are recorded. We post them online for those who couldn't make it. Um, so, but uh, thank you for being here. Uh, glad to have everyone involved. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, introductions, I don't think we need to do any. I think everyone here knows each other for the most part. Um, we'll go right into discussion on scale API improvements. Um, I talk, uh, Felix emailed me. Um, if he gets here, he can give more detail. He has been very busy this week, and he has not been able to do the object add and remove um, yet. So not a whole lot of update there. Um, it's still on his list to be done very soon. I don't know if it's going to be done this week. It may be next week. Um, he didn't really specify, so I will um, talk to him some more about that. Um, with that, the ADB uh, TR069 CM software integration is kind of in the same boat because it's, we're dependent upon the scale API improvements uh, being completed. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Okay. Um, carrier interest group updates. Uh, there's actually a few things here. The the data model and OpenWRT. This has really gone into now a discussion more um, on on the what is a data model for that high level um, abstraction layer that has been discussed a little bit. Um, I talked with Inteno yesterday. Uh, Bruce and Sukru and uh, a few other folks there just kind of catch up, and they they were kind of expressed that. Um, they 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 came into the data model discussion, um, it, and I wasn't totally clear, and I, I, that uh, they were not as concerned about the exact technical uh, implementation for how that could be done. It could be done through, uh, you know, their their proposals for uh, UBUS um, or uh, something along the lines of SCAL. It's they're kind of indifferent. The, it's more the issue of uh, creating an actual high-level data model that works for everyone. So, uh, Bruce, do you have any? Did I describe your your kind of situation well, or? Yeah, I think that you did um, a good description of that. The important thing is that we in the community are able to get things to work. Um, so, how it's actually implemented is, you know isn't the most important thing. The most important thing is that people can do business, and either way, the way of doing that is making sure that we have in, in place a high-level data model. And, and giving a place for third-party third application providers to be, or whoever to be able to write their applications and know that they'll be able to work on top of that, in that environment. Mm -hmm. and the major requirement I mean, we defined it for the data models was to be able, you know, to put any um, management protocol, uh, whether it's TR69 or something different, and uh, to to be able to work with the existing data models uh, in the most seamless way possible, to avoid any, you know, re-implementation of, of data models. Yeah, but I think that for us it wasn't really, it's not just about application. I mean, it's not just about management. It's also about how to create GUIs. It's about how to create data log, you know, application logic and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So okay. that it, it goes beyond what you would necessarily, like there may be some things you want to do that are part of the data model that are, that are not just management. I mean, so it's, it's really yeah. extending the use cases to not just include um, Management. I agree. Sure. Yep. So, yeah, we we'll have to talk some more to Felix, and but I, you know, scale may be the technical way of doing that, or it may not. I don't. I don't think we've, we're totally concluded either way. Um, but what that data model is, that standard to allow you to build, um, you know, a GUIs and move them between stacks or move them between uh, newer, older versions to have a stable API. Um, that is still kind of uh, being discussed. Um, and I did, um, we have done a couple posts on uh, uh, the carrier interest group related to this, uh, particularly one of the things we were going to ask is to get a sense of what stacks we want to um, consider as part of this kind of um, API, uh, the stack independent API. 
Um, it's not a, uh, I mean, we intend to be totally independent of Stack, but obviously there, it helps to know what we're, what we need to consider. Um, the ones that are kind of the, you know, the obvious ones we put on there was OpenWRT and RDK, um, RDKB, but if there are additional stacks, um, whether they be something you use internally or something that is, is publicly available, I mean, open embedded or something, I don't even know, um, please, please put your, please put it down on there so we can um, consider it. Um, yeah, so, and then we will then get to a sense of what are, also would like people to share what their use cases are. What are the things you need to be able to do? What are the, um, if possible, can you share, like what are the particular things you need to accomplish? I mean, is it, is it things like being able to set the SSID of the Wi-Fi? Is it, you know, or, or do you need to be able to control the firewall? Those type of things, if we know what all those things are, it's going to help us then guide us on what the particular high-level API needs to accomplish. So, any other comments on that? Uh, not on data models, but as this is a point about the current interest group, yep. um, I just sent an email uh, to you, Art, and a few other guys about, you know, the RDK. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, I had a face-to-face -face meeting with the RDK management in Paris a few days ago and had the opportunity to, to discuss about uh, their uh, willingness or not to collaborate uh, with us. So uh, after the email I received from them in, in December, it was quite, uh, my interpretation was that it was quite uh, negative uh, as answer. Now I think I understand better how, how they uh, work, what they want, what they don't want. So for those that are interested in these topics, uh, I um, suggest uh, to organize a, a dedicated call to, to exchange on that and to define how we could move forward. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, good job, Wojtek. Glad to hear that uh, you were able to make reestablish the touch with them. And I will meet with them again at the end of month, so in, uh, in two weeks, okay, yeah, three weeks. No, it's actually, no, three weeks, yeah. <laughs> That's great. No, definitely, we will, um, I will uh, contact, I, the people that I know are very interested, and then we'll also open it up to others. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. That's awesome. Um, the other things about the carrier interest group, um, I, um, in, you know, in Walter's absence, I, I'd started trying to um, put some of that information about what we're actually um, uh, proposing for the low-level API now that we have some agreement between the, the three major uh, chip makers to uh, standardize or have a common API for Wi-Fi. Um, I'm just kind of taking most of the stuff that Walter, the great um, work that Walter's done, and kind of putting it into a into a document. And um, I'll send that over to you, Walter. Now, now that I know that you're um, you're available and back, that we can um, you can maybe help me out on some of the uh, technical things and and finalize that. But I think that uh, w I, I, this is kind of my thinking is that the way we should handle the announcement of um, the low-level API kind of, uh, you know, project is to, uh, I, I think, create a, a website that kind of highlights what we're trying to do, like all the APIs we're eventually trying to get to, and then clearly describes the ones that we've already accomplished and the ones that we're trying to accomplish, and says, okay, here are the things we considered, and here's the result we came up with, and then as part of that have, um, some level of uh, description of the various people involved and who the the um, the chip makers and what they've agreed on standardizing on or if they've already done it. So that kind of gives people guidance and, and highlights the work that we've done, which has been really impressive and I know has uh, um, accomplished things that people have been trying to accomplish for for a while. So. Um, that's kind of my initial thought, and I will I'll uh, email 
the chairs and uh, and the relevant parties um, probably today or tomorrow, and I'll also send that information over to Walter. Any thoughts on that? Sounds like the uh, yeah, that sounds like the tracking that you have on typical uh, uh, committees. Um, uh, well, at least on standardization bodies, say they have something similar like that. Who, who has been available? Who's been working on that? Who's been committing certain things? So that uh -huh. makes sense uh, to me. Um, I'm going to need to catch up. I have to read my mail from the last three, four, three, four weeks, and um, and then I'll comment and I'll get active in the in the document that you share and everything. Awesome. No, totally understandable. So, um, yeah, we'll and we'll go from there. So yeah, I think that'll that'll be good. Uh, Hauke also shared uh, some um, the GPIO, just some really simple. Here's the one we should probably standardize on. I don't think that was actually unclear, but it was good to actually have that in some uh, written form. So uh, we haven't had agreement from all the parties on that, though, so I think we're still working on that. Um, and I, I think... Hey, I'll, Eric, just, yep. just, just one quick note with regard to this one. I took some time to look into uh, some Debian uh, implementation of those uh, um, APIs for GPIOs. Mm -hmm. I did some skunk works on, on, on the Raspberry Pi. And I think that's that's quite good stuff. So uh, seems to cover most of the cases, at least uh, uh, related to uh, that specific uh, Broadcom uh, chipset. But uh, I mean, that's just one voice. But I think that's that, that's good stuff. Yes. Yes. No. I definitely. That seems to be the standard going forward. The SysFS stuff. So when you get at that level, it's it's it gets a little bit more complicated than what it might seem. It's not just about assigning IOs or bringing lines up and down. There is a whole bunch of things that modern SOC actually allow to set up in terms of pull up and you name it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, interrupt generation and so on. But it, all of that seems to be covered by that header file. So okay. and I have a working uh, scan work that I did myself, as I said, on, on, on a kernel module that you can use to test this. Just anyone who's interested in entering this happy to share my, my analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on this? All right. Um, that's it, I think, for the carrier interest group update. Uh, the, this is a topic that came up yesterday when I talked with Nintendo, a purple feed for OpenWRT uh, lead. And this is kind of an interesting uh, discussion. Uh, Bruce, would you like to describe it? Or I, I can do that, too. But you're the one who can you know, Yeah, I can, you know. I, can, I can try to introduce it at least, mm -hmm. and maybe you could be more eloquent. In, in <laughs> I don't know if I'm eloquent, it, but, but thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, basically, the need that we had was to maybe help, well, there were, there were two problems that we saw. The first one is that if you look at the needs of the community and maybe the needs of what we call enterprise um, developers, that they're not always aligned with each other. So that in terms of what we as a company who are doing more professional um, OpenWRT types of uh, development, we think that there may be some needs that and that would not be necessarily taken on directly by the community um, in terms of the development that they're doing. And by the same token, we don't want to break um, OpenWRT or lead. We want to make sure that um, we don't have to start creating new branches. So the, the proposal that we had was that there should be some type of feed mechanism where we could create packages that we would um, be supported by Purple, and that these would then be available for um, different people to, to test and, and to make contributions to. It will be, of course, open source. Um, and it would be a, a way of getting things to happen a little bit quicker for some of these more enterprise um, type of applications that we think that um, we would like to see happen with inside of Purple. So it was just basically an idea that we had. Um, whether or not the Purple community as such is interested in this, is, that's another story. But for us, it was trying to understand how we can make things work a little bit faster. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Um, I can give you the background. There, there was one particular project that um, Bruce had mentioned through Antenna was uh, the um, 
uh, the the U bus uh, via uh, web sockets uh, um, work. That kind of you can't have that installed with you HTTPD. Um, and there was some talk with Felix about it. Was well, I mean, is this something that should be uh, submitted to to packages, or is this um, or is this you know going to cause conflict? And you can't have UHTBD, which is kind of the standard web, web server uh, on OpenWRT lead. Um, you can't have them both installed because they won't work together. So while Felix suggested the idea of you know it would be good to put this implementation in UHTBD, and everyone's fine with that. At the same time, it would be nice to get this this information this current implementation out there so people can experiment with it and then over time hopefully some of that stuff's going to get moved into UHPD or wherever um, so I made I, I you know I, I I think that this is not a it is actually a pretty good idea because this clearly states that we are not trying to force things into uh, uh, openwrt packages uh, unless we really think that they're really well compatible with needs of of um, the community and they're not going to break anybody's packages and they're not going to cause any dependency issues or any of that stuff. Um, but this is kind of at the very least a first step to get things out in public. Um, so I think it's, I personally am, am kind of, I think it's a, a pretty good idea. Um, I'm, you know, I'd like to hear what other people think though. Um, I, I think that it would be <clears throat> I think the direction in which you should be thinking is like how to make purple feed uh, by default enabled in OpenWRT and lead and what are the requirements to do that. Not like because you have uh, dozens of feeds out there which are not let's call it in mainline so instead of doing yet another one of those to uh, bring the quality level up and to have it enabled by default. So whoever uses those projects can easily install whatever carrier feature they are interested in. And uh, just to back up on another point that you mentioned, um, I'm not sure what are the technical reasons not to use OWSD at this point in time. I, I, I'm not quite clear with regards to technical reasoning of putting this functionality in UHTTPD. I, so it, it would be good that it's available so if somebody wants to use it, great. And we should look into how existing projects such as Lucy can switch over to OWSD. I think that would be much more um, scalable way <coughs> moving forward regards to what Inteno has developed. All right. Um, I, I, I know that uh, what do you think are the is the likelihood though that we can get this feed into um, OpenWRT lead by default? Mm, I think first step would be to ask the community what they think about that. Okay. And, and me wearing community hat, I would support this uh, idea. Okay. But there are other folks that should also express their opinion and I think we should ask them. Okay. Um, but do you do we want to oh, I partially don't would feel uncomfortable asking until we know what we're putting in there and outside of um, uh, you know this project from Nintendo do we do we have other projects that we know that we're going to put in this feed I mean we would have to make sure that we have sufficient I don't want to want to go through the process of asking about putting in a feed and then find out that we have like one project and that's all that but we're going to put but in there. Isn't, but isn't Skull one of the projects? Sure. But, I mean, I was always thought it would go into OpenWRT uh, packages because um, it was general enough. But, I mean, I'm, I'm open to either. 
Mm. Yeah, well, like I say, this would be a good discussion to have uh, on a wider level. Yep. Okay. Also, also, it's not one package. Now it's SCAL, tomorrow is, I don't know, OWSD, day after tomorrow is uh, Soft at Home, uh, TR069 stuff, day after that is ADB, etc., etc. So, mm -hmm. it's not that, that there will be um, only one thing. I mean, you have to start somewhere. And That's true. good thing about it is that um, you would, uh, anybody who uses these projects has direct access to, you know, this feed. You go make menu config and there you go. You can see it. So, mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea to, to go in that direction. But in any case, I think purple feed should be a good step forward. Yeah, I definitely think that we'll, we'll have to talk some more about how exactly we can um, bring bring this up with with the community as a whole. Um, but I, I generally find the idea of a feed a good idea, uh, no matter what we do. Uh, do. What do does anyone else here have opinions on this? Well, I really like the idea of uh, querying the community, mm -hmm. uh, as Luca has proposed. So I think it's a great idea, and I think we should get some more feedback on it. I agree. Good. Sounds good. All right. We will, I will talk to, a little bit with Luca, and we'll, we'll go forward with that. Um, board farm updates. Uh, from my end, not a ton. I know that uh, um, Pedro, I know that you... Uh, the folks at uh, Ultron were involved in that? Or do you know if there are any updates on their end? So from what I'm aware of, they are currently studying and analyzing everything that is available from board form. Okay. Uh, so all documentation, and they are preparing also a, a document uh, in order to announce the current capabilities for board form. Okay. So once this is uh, available, I think they will share with the rest of the people. Awesome. If they have any additional questions, please please don't have them hesitate to ask. Sure. And also thank you for your support on this one, Eric. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Happy to help. Uh, Paul, any anything from your end on Board Farm? Uh, no, as I said before, we're kind of adding um, uh, new tests. I guess the question is whether these are worth sort of pushing back up, uh, whether just framework changes are useful upstream. Um, so I think maybe it depends on the test. I'm not sure. Uh, just me personally, I'm not sure whether whether it's worth sort of contributing back individual test cases or not. I mean, if they're, I mean, I think contributing back test cases as long as they're not like super specific to your board, I think that's mm -hmm. a very good idea. I mean, that that's huge. That's that's kind of, in some sense, that's the easiest thing to do. Um, <laughs> and it it creates builds sure. the gives you more options for what people can do. So I, I would wholeheartedly support that. If you need any, if okay. you have any questions or need any help with that, I'm happy to help you. Get that, get that. No done. problem. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about board farm? All right. Um, uh, funding open WRT projects. That's, the same as before, uh, just uh, we are waiting to finish off the current ones before we move on to something else. Uh, Open WRT Summit, we had a meeting yesterday, the committee. Um, we are talking, uh, we are looking at ways to uh, split out responsibilities uh, to, to uh, you know, get additional sponsors and get, um, uh, you know, decide on on the event and the or where the event will be in the sessions and any anything else that needs to happen. So uh, that we're going to meet again in two weeks uh, once we uh, have some of that stuff out there. Um, anything else, Eric? Are there any dates already planned for this Open WRT Summit or not? No, no, we have no dates or or uh, or location. I would guess it will be a, probably in October again, uh, 
you know, give or take, but I think we're that's up up in the air exactly when and what day. All that. With ELCE or, or not? Uh, I don't think the committee has has thought that far ahead. I, I don't think that the, there were kind of mixed feelings on that. Um, it's kind of expensive with the ELCE, but you do get the added advantage that there are people there. So I think that is something the committee is going to have to decide. So I, um, if there's any other feedback from others, I mean, I think that's that would be valuable. All right. Any other comments or well, what? When when is the next uh, meeting on on this topic? Uh, the Open WRT Summit. It is in two weeks. Um, it mm is. -hmm. is um, let me look at my calendar quick. It will be the um, twenty second. Same time as before. Uh, so. Uh, don't remember offhand what we had yesterday, but I'll I'll send that out to the to that list, um, and we'll go from there. But I'm I'm going to send out. We're going to ask people on the list to volunteer for responsibilities, and then we'll figure out what isn't covered and who will what we'll have to assign. Because um, I think that you know Paul has expressed that there's probably some interest among a number of the groups. Um, uh, the participants and their and their organizations to take on different parts of it. So, all right. Any other questions or comments? Um, maybe I have uh, one. Uh, so, uh, my personal feeling and experience is experience is that a, a good accelerator to whatever we do is to have, you know, a face-to-face -face meetings from time to time. Mm -hmm. So my question is whether you think it could be a good idea to start talking uh, about uh, another physical meeting uh, somewhere in the incoming months. Well, uh, that actually is a, is a, uh, a really good uh, point to make. Uh, we're talking about having a, a purple summit in May. And Cesare, what is the date likely to be? Uh, we are targeting 15 in Berkeley, but nothing is defined. So it's not sure either the date or the location. But it's going to be around that time frame, and it's definitely going to be in the Bay Area. And the goal of that mm. is, is to have both um, a general uh, you know, presentations about things related to related to purple, and so we, everybody can get involved from all the different groups. But also, I assume meetings and and things along those lines. So, um, Cesare, yes, Cesare, if it would be possible to to uh, change the date, I would be happy because actually the week of uh, May the fifteenth. Uh, I have some some other uh, activities already planned. Uh, yes, so for that's, me, the that's, better one will be the the week before. Yes, uh, absolutely. We are looking into that. And one other reason is that we are doing this in conjunction with uh, uh, Berkeley, UC Berkeley University. And uh, uh, yeah. they recommend the week before, because otherwise school is over and it's a little bit difficult to do things there. But as I said, we haven't decided yet. We are considering that time frame. Mm -hmm. So I've taken note. And if it is the week before, uh, yes. And please, if anyone in the call, anyone else, if they have a preference, uh, either send a note to me uh, or to Eric. Or uh, feel free to join our marketing uh, call on Fridays, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 8 to 9 uh, a.m. Pacific. Or to have a, a representative of your company join. That's where we are planning and defining this event, and we are open to ideas and input and anything else. Thank you, Wojtek. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if if that if if we feel that that kind of meets what your you know what you're thinking about a, a face to face, I think that's probably good. I mean, if if we feel that there's something else we need to do separate, then I'm you know happy to try to facilitate that. So. Please let me know if, if you think that that's going to work, uh, Wojtek, and 
um, we'll go from there. Eric, the only thing I can think of is the location itself. Yeah, I think. And so uh, Bay Area, it's, it's definitely great for the people on this side of the Atlantic, but I don't know, perhaps just to think to a parallel or a smaller scale kind of meeting on, on the European side. That's probably easier for people to manage. Yeah, so we, we must think about the, the, the precise topic we would like to discuss in face-to-face. And there are definitely some, and usually the progress is the best <laughs> during this kind of meeting. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with you there. All right. Um, so uh, Cesare, j just one thing. Could, could you send me an invite for, for the marketing uh, group meeting tomorrow, please? Absolutely. So I'm going to add you to the list. It's for uh, intended for people who work in the marketing uh, departments of uh, the uh, members. No, but, but you are absolutely welcome to attend and, and be part of as, as anything yeah. else we do. I'm going to send you an invite right away. And thank, thank you again, sir. White, for, for your for your help. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, and yes, definitely, everyone else is, is certainly welcome to, to join those meetings or, or follow along uh, in the Joint Marketing Council group. So I um, would welcome your participation. I don't have anything else on my agenda. Is there anything else that folks wanted to talk about? Um, I'm just wondering... Is anybody or who is going to Barcelona uh, end of February and on Embedded World mid-March? I'm going to And look, by the way, that's, that's another of the topics that we discuss in the marketing call uh, Friday, so tomorrow. So uh, happy to uh, uh, share some of what I know uh, right now, but uh, um, that, that would be the right context as well to get more details. We are organizing also some side events. And so you know exactly what, what what's happening. By the way, yes, uh, I'm going to embed it work. And uh, in fact, Tuesday, I'm going to have two presentations, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And one of these presentations, uh, by the way, shows uh, uh, some implementation of a virtualized OpenWRT uh, device. So that's something very relevant. And we are also planning some other smaller side event, kind of drinks or something, but has not been defined yet. Uh, I'm not going to uh, Mobile World Congress. All right. Anyone else uh, know that they're going to either of those events? We have some people from our team going to um, Embedded World, but uh, not me. Okay. And in fact, we are planning a press release for Embedded World where we are going to give some visibility also to purple members who are there, uh, ideally uh, as, 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 as uh, exhibitors, not just attending the show. But again, all of this is, is happening in the context of that marketing conversation, and we definitely welcome everyone who's interested uh, to, to join the, the, the other conversation tomorrow morning, 8, 9, at Pacific. All right. Uh, any other questions, comments, topics that people want to bring up? Still about 20 minutes in our hour, but we can get done early if that's that's works out. Well, hearing nothing, then uh, we will uh, we will call the meeting. Then thanks everyone for coming. Um, we will be in touch via email and and uh, and. Uh, meet again next week. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.